Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome. This is Tamaya Robles. I am your credit repair specialist, credit repair expert. I am the owner of Fix My Credit Now E50.com. I am also the host of this podcast, Coast to Coast Credit, where I talk anything and everything of or pertaining to credit, whether it's directly or indirectly, personal credit or business credit. I talk about that here. And sometimes, like today, I have a little story time for y'all. So what encouraged me to bring up this story. I actually forgot all about it, but I was doing a podcast. No, I wasn't doing a podcast. My fault. I was doing a YouTube video and I'm talking about collection agencies and what they um, can and cannot do and how they're supposed to report and all of this, what their responsibilities are. And while I'm talking about that and showing y'all, it dawned on me that I had this story from way back in the day, I think I was what, 40s now. I want to say I was in my late 20s, early 30s. And I'm telling you, I was extremely irresponsible by then, back then with the credit, with the finances. If you guys follow me, y'all already know. But I had a crazy ass story. So let me tell you what happened. Boom. I had, it was just me and my first child back then. And I was working as a workers' comp adjuster in corporate as usual, like I, like I already know about me. And I was making pretty good money at that time. Um, I lived in a nice area. Um, I always basically lived in a nice area. Um, <laughs> but anyway, it was a nice little area in Winfield, uh, which is like the better part of West Philly, if you know, you know. And I had a good job. I had a good paying job or whatever, but I was just really, really horrible with money. I wasn't paying my bills was barely paying my rent. I was just buying dumb stuff, not even something I can account for, like banging ass clothes, a nice car, whatever. Nah, it was just whatever. So anywho, um, I used to always like run out of money <laughs> and I wasn't going to keep asking my parents for money. Um, I wasn't really going to speak in terms, I think, in certain times with my parents. Plus they were like, yo, this kid is really irresponsible. We're not going to just keep giving her money and, you know, without her learning her lessons. So I would do these little payday loans. And I'm not sure if y'all know anything about payday loans. I'm actually going to do a video on payday loans. But basically what you do is you would go online and it was a huge thing back then for sure. And you would put in your information to these companies online and you would apply for a loan and you just had to connect your bank account where you would get your direct deposits in, in order to be approved. And I think they did go by your credit. I didn't know anything about credit back then. So I'm going to be honest with y'all. I have no idea how they determined how much money they would approve you for. So I think I'm guessing it had something to do with how much money they could verify was being deposited on a regular basis. If anybody out there knows, just leave it in the comments. But I ugh, oh, I just didn't know and I didn't care. My thought process was I'm going to bleed as many of these companies as possible for some bread and continue to be irresponsible. And that was my goal at that time. I didn't say it was right people. I didn't say it was smart. I didn't, I'm not encouraging anyone else to do this. Okay. But this was my mentality at that time. So I went through several, several payday loan companies and it was to the point where I just wasn't getting approved anymore. So I had to go to like the shadier ones and instead of getting maybe like a couple of thousand, I would get a couple of hundred. That's how I knew I was getting like wearing the system out. So they would, they would definitely send out the cash, right? And that was cool. Sometimes I was getting it in two days, at least between seven, two to seven days. And then when it came time for them to withdraw their money, some of you guys know that the interest rate was bananas and it was so high that you're basically forever paying them. And they actually did a Netflix special on that. If I could pull it up, I will, and I'll do a... a, a or a reaction video to it. But what they did was it's it was like the interest was so high and the agreement was so messed up that you are forever paying them. And honestly, 
people were paying for years. And to this day, they've been messed up, what have you. Now that didn't happen to me, luckily, but that's basically what I was doing. So even though I was getting approved for loans, they were taking so much out of my check. I was broke. And that's what a lot of people were going through. So what I started doing was I said, okay, I'm going to apply for these payday loans, but then I'm not going to pay them. And then I'm going to move my direct deposit to another bank account. Right. So that's what I was doing. I didn't do it too, too often, but I did it enough where I didn't pay these people. So eventually, like with any other company, with any other bank, if you're supposed to pay them back and you default on the loan or the agreement, usually they just roll it over. The interest goes higher, your bill and what you owe is double, tripled, and then they start the calls come in. So then they call and say, hey, are you going to pay the bill? You're going to pay the bill. I'm one of those people, even to the today, if I don't recognize the phone number on my phone, if it's not an assigned name, I don't answer it anyway, especially back then. I really didn't answer the phone. <laughs> like everybody I was cool with, they like would call me. I had their number or they were close by and they would stop by. They would text a ham on my way, whatever, whatever. So if I didn't know the number, I wasn't answering. And I never listened to my voice messages. <laughs> like, even to this day, if for personal reasons, no, I don't listen to my voicemail. And But for business, I have a business line. So I have an assistant. She listens to the voicemail. And sometimes I do listen to the voicemail as far as business is concerned. But on a personal note, they would call. And there was no texting back then, but they would call and they would leave messages I didn't know. I mean, and then people that were calling me, they would say, hey, your voicemail is full. And I say, OK. And I would never listen to the voicemail. I just delete them. You know what I mean? So they would reach out. And again, I'm ignoring them. I'm ignoring the phone calls. I'm ignoring the messages. They weren't really sending me anything in the mail saying, hey, you owe us money. If they did, I'm going to tell you right now. I'll let you know right now. I didn't check my mail then either. <laughs> like I didn't check my mail. I was just, like I said, I was mad and responsible. Then I didn't care. To me, mail meant bills. And then I would have to address the issue that bills were due. I mean, nobody was writing me letters except my grandma um, <laughs> for fun. But usually if my grandma wrote me a letter, she was one of those people that would write you a letter and then call you to let you know that she wrote you a letter as a surprise and then for you to wait for that in the mail. Other than that, I didn't check the mail um, or around my birthday or the holidays or whatever. My birthday is right near the holidays, so a lot of times my family would send me money. And other than that, psh, what, what am I looking at the mail for? Why am I answering the phone? That was my mentality back then. So boom, after the phone calls, after the voice messages, I don't know if they were writing me or not saying I owed them any money, but eventually I guess my information went to collections. I don't know, because I didn't know anything about credit back then. But then I got these special type of phone calls that would, how do I put it? It looked like they were local phone calls. And if you guys know anything about collection agencies, yeah, they they stopped making it look like they were coming from businesses. And now it looks like it could have been a local number. So then they would call under a number that it, it may be similar to a number I already had. So they were getting pretty crafty. So then one time I'm at work and I'm just chilling, doing my thing. And I get a phone call from the front desk saying that a call needs to be transferred to me, which was strange because I had my own little cubicle back then. I had my own phone, my business line, and my extension, my direct line. So I never got a phone call to the fr from the front desk. I mean, even if it was an emergency from a family member or a friend, they would call my cell phone, not the front desk of my job. So that was strange, but I answered it. And when I answered it, it was one of the payday loan. Well, no, they sold the debt. It was a collection agency. Let me be clear. It was a collection agency. 
but I didn't know this. And they were just really sweet. And they were like, Hey, I just, you know, need to verify that this is Tamaya. And then they said my maiden name. And I said, Oh yeah, that's me. And then they said, okay, well, did you, you know, make a, get a loan? And I was like, <laughs> so I was just like, yeah, you know, I'm like, fuck it. They called my job. This is serious. You know, I didn't want my job to know what I was doing low key. Cause like I said, like we all got paid pretty well, even with the level I was on, I was a lower level employee within the workers comp industry. I think I was a medical only adjuster at the time, but I still made a lot of money back then. So I didn't want anybody to know I was broke like that now. So they were really nice. I was like, okay, now that they're calling a job, there's no way to get around this. Let me just deal with this heads on. So they were like, well, you know, listen, this is what we can do. Uh, first of all, what's going on? I'm like, well, I'm struggling paying. And they're like, well, listen, you have to pay something or it's going to be really bad for you. Like, this is how it started. It's like, it's going to be really bad. And, you know, we care about you and we really want the best for you. We want to keep. So I was like, you know what? All right, cool. And I said, what do you need? And they're like, oh, all you have to do is give us your bank account information. And I was like, because remember, I, I got a new bank account now. So I was like, oh, I don't have that on me. You know, I'm sorry. Like who I, at the time I wasn't walking around with my routing number and my account number chilling. Uh, so I have my debit card on me. <laughs> so I was like, well, I got my debit card information. Do you want that? And they were like, yeah, give us that information. So I'm like, bet. So I said, how do I send it over to you now back then it was all about faxes and stuff. So they were like, okay, this is what we want you to do. We want you to send us a copy uh, a fo um a Xerox copy of your debit card. We want you to send a picture of your driver's license and we need you to fill out this uh, form and write us a letter saying that you agree. Like they had it down pat. So they were like, but you got to do this like now because if you don't do it now, then it's going to forfeit this agreement that we have. And, you know, life's going to be really bad. Like I was like, all right, bet. So I stopped everything. Now, mind you, I'm already working at a hectic job, a crazy ass job, right? I didn't like them people at the time. They didn't like me, but it was just crazy, crazy times. And I was just like, let me see if I could just stop working real quick, handle this. And then all is well, all is well, right? Real rap. I didn't have the money. I think whatever money they wanted, what was whatever was in my bank account. They just needed to be attached to my bank account. And I just needed them to quietly go away and stop calling my job. So I didn't think they would continuously call my job. I felt as all right, boom, they got me. They got me. And that's it. Let me just address this issue. So the one thing was I never knew how to properly work a fax machine. I think to this day, I barely know how to work a fax machine. <laughs> um, I struggle with it. Let me say that. Cause like who uses faxes right now? And back then, like I, I had an assistant or somebody assistant, like took care of the faxes. But again, I'm trying to do this low key. So since I didn't know how to do faxes, I had to ask somebody how to fax some information over. So I didn't really trust anybody, but my manager at the time. So I had my manager, her name is Jackie. One time for Jackie. I love her to death. She was the truth. She was always there for me. Always, always. And if anybody knows about Liberty Mutual, Balakin Wood, <laughs> that job was the shiz naive back then. I was, I was a little firecracker, but I eventually calmed down and everybody got cool with everybody. But anywho, she was my ride or, ride or die, but I wasn't trying to tell her my business to that degree. So I had no choice. So I was like, all right, Paul, let me just ask her how to use a fax machine. It'll be very simple. So I was like, hey, Miss Jackie, um, I need to use a fax machine. Can you show me how to use it? She was like, sure. So she showed me how to use it. And she was one of those hands-on managers where she liked to make sure you thoroughly understood something. So she would take whatever situation you were going through at the time as an, a training right there. So she was like, okay, give me the information you need to put in the facts. I'm like, okay. So I'm giving her my driver's license, <laughs> giving her my debit card. And she's like, yo, who are you sending this to? And I was like, this company that just called. And she said, so she was like, what company? I was like, I don't know, but they said I need to do this, this, and this. And she was like, that doesn't make sense. And she said, how do you know? I said, well, they just called the job. 
They called the front desk. She said, that's really suspicious. She was like, don't, don't do that. She said, no real company is going to ask you for this information. They're not going to ask for it in a fax. This is real suspicious. And then she was like, she pulled me aside and she was like, what's really going on? I, I didn't tell her. I didn't tell her at first. I was like, nothing is Jackie. I just, you know, I brushed it off. I lied or whatever. So she was like, okay, cool. But if you need anything, let me know. But I'm not going to show you how to fax information over to an unknown company. All right, cool. Let it go. I'm so nervous though. So about an hour passed and this time I got a phone call at my desk and it was the same company different individual. And this individual was a little more aggressive. So he was like, yo, what happened to the money? Now he sounded foreign. Respectfully, he sounded like he was Indian and he called himself Bob. <laughs> and I was ignorant. Like, if you know me personally, you know how my mouth can be. But back then I was super ignorant. I always wanted all the smoke and I always, always had something sarcastic to say out of my mouth. So he sounded foreign. He sounded like he was Indian. And he called himself Bob. And I'm like, they call Indians Bob? I, I didn't know that. Like, you're, you're Bob. You're Bob. So he was like, yeah, I'm Bob. I'm like, okay, Bob, right, from India, that you're going to try to say you're not from India. So because my, my supervisor already told me and asked me all these questions, it triggered me to ask him questions. So I'm like, well, where are you coming from? Calling from what's the name of your company? So dude was like, it doesn't matter what the name of my company is. And I'm like, what? I'm like, well, you, it is important because you're calling my desk. You're calling me and you're talking about money and you're threatening, uh, I guess for, I guess, financial hardships. If I break this agreement, he's like, well, you already broke the agreement. That's why I'm calling. He was like, basically, I'm going to tell you like this. And this is what this man said to me from the collection agency. This is real talk. No lie whatsoever. He said, if you don't send me the information to your bank account so you can pay off this debt. We're going to find you at work. Just like I have your number at your desk now, I know where you work at. And we're going to come by in an unmarked van. We're going to kidnap you. We're going to put you in the back of the van, beat the shit out of you. Then we're going to drive you to an unknown location and we're going to fucking kill you. Real rap, the dude said it just like that. Indian Bob, we're going to call him Indian Bob. Indian Bob said this shit to me, no lie, from a collection agency. So now I'm shook. I'm shook it to the 10th power because he sounded serious. I'm like, well, maybe Indian Bob really isn't from India. Like maybe he lives in America. And now he has traced me to my desk and I'm terrified now. I got to get home to my daughter or whatever. So I hung up because I'm scared. I call my manager over and yes, back then I used to smoke cigarettes. So, her, so did she. And we had a little smoke session outside and I was told her what happened. I said, listen, I've been, I've been calling these uh, payday loan people. I've been broke and all this other shit. And, um, you know, I'm sorry, but I just, I'm always broke and I'm trying to get money and I've been burning these collection agencies and now these um, payday loan people and now the collection agencies, they're talking about they're going to kill me and they know where I live at if I don't give up my banking information. <laughs> so lo and behold, my homegirl Jackie was like, girl, please. <laughs> she was like, it was so cool because she was this teeny tiny white lady, but she wanted all the smoke all the time. You hear me? And she was just like, ah, they ain't going to do that shit. She was like, you know how many companies come at me every single day? <laughs> and I'm like, what? She was like, I owe a lot of people money. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, but you're my manager. And she was like, so she was like, I go to AC all the time and I gamble all the time. I have gambled my 401k away. I've gambled my husband's 401k. He has no clue that I've done so, but oh my God, when he finds out, I'm more concerned about him finding out than all these collection agencies calling me, threatening me at my job about giving them money. And he, she was like, they're not going to do shit. This is a threat. Don't worry about it. You're cool. <laughs> I was like, oh, 
damn, okay, <laughs> okay. It's good to know that I have a sister here in this fucked up credit world that we're in. <laughs> but that's what happened, right? And real talk, after a while, they stopped calling. Um, I don't know. I think she did something where the calls would go to her. One thing about Jackie was she always had your back. And if a situation was worse or complex, she never really told you what was going on if she could prevent it. So I just know the call stopped coming to my desk. Fast forward, maybe like two years later, right? I'm chilling and I'm on South Street in Philly. If y'all know what South Street is in Philly, one time for the one time. South Street is a cool ass city where it has all these like shopping uh, stores, like specialty stores. And back then we used to just hang out, chill. They have a little restaurant up there, whatever, whatever. So I'm chilling. And I think I want my homegirl, whatever. And I get a call. It's like 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night. Now, if you can recall, in the if you are following me on YouTube and you listen to my video or watch my video where I'm talking about the FCRA and what they're saying these agencies can and can't do, one of the things is they have to call you within um, certain business hours. They can't call you, let's say, late at night, okay? So in this case, I'm on South Street. I think it might have even been a weekend. I'm not really sure on that, but I'm chilling with my homegirl. We're on South Street at night, and I get this phone call. Now, the phone call sounded a lot like Indian Bob, except this time it sounded like Indian John, right? So again, he sounded Indian. He gave like some sort of basic-ass name. Again, we'll call him Indian John. And then Indian John is just, he kind of sounded militant. It was weird. It sounded different in the background. It didn't sound like he was at a, a call center or anything, but he said he was calling from California and he was making it seem like he was part of the feds of some sort doing some deep internal investigation on me because I owed this money. And he had this formal, um, the, this ID and he was like, I am some police of some shit and whatever. It just sounded like it was the cops after my ass from California though. And I'm pretty intelligent. I like to say that often back then I felt I was pretty intelligent, but I was naive to this type of shit because number one, when you're doing some scamation, you're always looking behind your back. And then even if you get away with it, real talk, you never really get away with it. So I'm thinking, oh my God, my damn reckoning has come today with Indian John from California, right? With police number, yada, yada, yada. And dude was straight up like this. Listen, I don't care what you heard, what you've been through, if you don't pay, we're going to come out and lock you up. Real talk. And I was like, damn, they got me. They got me, son. And I was just fucked up. But anywho, um, one of the things about me is I have a very short-term memory. <laughs> I, I have a short-term memory when it comes to bullshit. And I believed it at that moment. But I was having so much fun, I just fucking forgot. And I never really heard from Indian John ever again. So that was the story right there. <laughs> but moving along, ultimately, if you don't know anything about payday loans, at some point, uh, I think within the past several years, I want to say 10, 15 years, because time is going by so fast, that it, it they're just it's another form of predatory lending. And as we know now, more than ever, predatory lending is illegal. And these payday loan companies were such scams and they were sending people to, I don't know, to the poorhouse real talk, you know, and they were getting sued, things like that, to the point where at some point they, in certain situations, they had to pay people back. And ultimately, if you watch that Netflix documentary, it seems as though payday loans no longer exist. However, they just recreated themselves and they cre recreated themselves in <laughs> capital ones. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, they recreated themselves. So there's ways to look out for that. And now that pe more people are educated, the consumers 
are learning more and more about how things are supposed to go. These banks are just finding other ways to still be predatory, but word things different so it doesn't come off as if it's being predatory. Then we didn't know. And a lot of companies were banking off of making people poor and send them to the poorhouse. Now people know and they have to get creative. You know, they got to get more creative. So yeah, that was, that was the story. <laughs> but if anybody goes through these things, if y'all are going through these, don't take it seriously. If they really, if any company really wants to deal with you, they'll just put it on your credit report it takes less time. It's more affordable to do it that way than to, to hire Indian John and Indian Bob to call you and harass you and threaten you. They don't want that lawsuit. People record things now all the time. They don't want that work. Now, what has happened to me within the past, I'm going to say literally like two years, within the past two years, I've had threats via email from collection agencies from Honest to God, like, collection agencies either I never heard of before um, that had a debt I've never had before, but they had my maiden name. They had certain information about me, but I just never heard of the account. And they're talking about, oh yeah, you missed your court date. We're going to go lock you up. Um, Miss Tamika Robolik. And it's like, what? <laughs> you can't even spell my name right. Like what are you talking about? And I would disregard that because if I really have to be at court, court doesn't send you an email with the misspelling of your name and all. That's not how court moves. And if the cops really want to get you, they get a warrant and they come get you. You know what I'm saying? So psh, I'm not worried about any of that. So if I'm not worried, you're not worried. Focus on what's on your credit report watch my videos, get that free game. Like I'm always talking. And if you want to do it yourself, do it yourself. Other than that, hit me up, fix my credit now, 850.com and get anything off your credit report. Schedule consultation, 30 minutes only, please. Even though I do like talking to y'all, if it's good conversation, but check out the links, check me out on the podcast. Be sure to subscribe, like, share, comment, all that good stuff. And I wish you guys the best luck on your credit journey. Take care. Bye-bye.